just the first Sugden, and the first round finish. Uh, first of all, I hate to break it down, first of all, it's a very interesting way. We missed by this. What do you think that happened? Is it this sort of? It was a complete sort of disaster for me. I took a couple of weeks ago, I 100%. I'm waiting for the yard to come down, and um, I was in it over everybody normally on, but I was in the sauna, well, I've never been in the sauna, and the wait is what we're not. I mean, from 10 o'clock, when we was planning on leaving, we didn't end up leaving at 12, but I was in the sauna for two hours straight, and it only lost 0.3 of a kilo. It just wasn't going to come off of me, like whatever I tried to do. And I got here later on in the day, and I was trying to sort of run about, lose a bit of weight, lost as much as I could, and everyone who was there at that point, I was dying on my feet, and just sort of said, and it was very sportsman in the way he said, this is fight and go ahead, I know you're not the dispatch sort of person, I guarantee you'll know this way again. So what, what's your plan is to, for not to happen again? And just do all the right things, keep the youngsters away, back them off nice and early, and just keep the weight down in general a little bit more. I mean, after my last fight, enjoyed it so much and been away a couple of times, sort of let myself go a little bit. Definitely not going to happen again. You mentioned there that you struggled to get the weight off, but you're only a young guy. Do you think it's a case of you are naturally going to outgrow the division that you're in that you've had in it as you, as you, you know, grow up all, all, all the kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I mean, if I was a couple of inches taller, I'd fight up in the seven way, but the fact is, the guys are so big. And it's like a big brother fight at 77 in the K1 ball, but we're all walking around the same time as him. And at this point in my career, I'm coming up, I don't want to be fighting to get the guys up in the top of me, you know what I mean? So I'm just loving it at the minute. A bantam weight is perfect for the minute. Don't get me wrong, probably will get a fair weight in the future, but for now, I'm just my own. Talk, talk about the finish a little bit now. I think it was a uh, straight right left hook you caught him, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's right. Talk us through it, Rich, how, how you came to that match sure. Yeah, well, the game plan going in there was just to stay relaxed. I know I'm a good striker, it's more top class strikers, boxers, keep up score the time. I knew it was going to be good, so all I needed to do was buy my time, pick my shots, I knew the shot was going to come, and I seen it and I took it. My left touch was going to turn from the trademark and guarantee that, so people better watch out for it or stop playing out to defend it. I could help but know it is. You'd already dropped him, and by second nature, you finished the combo of the leg pin. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that second nature, that clinical strike, how devastated do you think your strike in the butcher at home, or how devastated do you think that's going to be in MMA? Most definitely. I mean, there's some top class strikes in MMA, but in my opinion, there isn't that many. I mean, as an MMA fan, I can understand why some guys consider good strikers, but as a K1 professional, I mean, I'd have a K1 pro fight, so these guys are not that good. There's a couple of guys, don't get me wrong, that have got good striking, but. I believe mine's one of the best, so I'm going to keep continuing to believe that. And you're free now, now. who is it you want to face next? Is there anyone you've got your eye on? Well, I'm going to say I'm keeping a close eye on that fight tonight. Um, we'll phantom weight title. Um, a couple of guys in that, both good guys. Um, like them both, speaking talent yesterday at the weigh in. Um, but at the end of the day, that's where I want to be. And if I can get there, then nothing but good things can come from that. So you, you are making quite an age for yourself here in Bath. Um, so, would you think you're ready for that fight though, at, at this current stage, or do you want a couple more fights before you know you, you take that type of fight? If I didn't think I was ready for that fight, I wouldn't mention it. I've got to be honest. I mean, I was sparring with top class guys. I was like Andre Winner, obviously trained with Jimmy, worked quite closely with him, worked some top class guys, and even just sparring people like Tim Wilder, Dean Truman, and people like that. And, them guys are fine all the time. I'm competing with them, so if I can compete with them, I can compete with guys my own weight at the same level without any issues. So. Absolutely. It was the best thing I've ever been to. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I got trained so amazingly well, and the chat performed so well. The fight was, it was a tough fight for Chad, but Chad delivered the game plan perfectly. As a coaching team, it's a great way to come into this fight of such a massive win. Because a lot of people watching that fight, I mean, every time we walk down the corridor with Chad today, people have been saying, oh, good deal. Chad did well and good. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know he did. It's an amazing thing, I think it actually is. Hopefully, I could be that big. And finally, uh, do you know when you'd like to be back out? We are back here in June. Maybe then? Maybe, maybe. I mean, I, I've got a bit of a holiday booked. It's always not my fight to book holidays. It's always seem to come at the right one time. But I've got a holiday booked at the end of May, but if the right fight's there and I'm feeling like I'm going to do a bit of training holiday, which I normally do anyway, um, I'd be well up for it, yeah, most definitely, and um, just look out for the guys because I only want to fight all the time. So.